Then you should just proxy the next wave. Look at their death timers. Renata up in one second. Uh, Varus up in eight, right? Yeah. Look where wave is. Look Varus okay. spawn. Varus spawn now. Look where wave is. Uh huh. Right? Okay. So Saya is like the best proxy farmer in the game. Mm. Why, why are you playing sorcery on Varus? Mm. <laughs> no clue actually, it's a bit of default. I don't know what to take. I mean, so the thing is like like if you're playing Varus, you're playing for two reasons. You're either playing like Lethality and be like really strong in lane, mm -hmm. or you're playing on hit, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so going these two just makes no sense because like you're not playing Varus Lethality to become like late game beast, you know? Because for lane, these does nothing. Um, oh, okay, okay. And Varus also like, you want to be really strong in lane, and you want to mm -hmm. get to spam spells, but you have no mana region. So, so you're just I going go? um, like you should just go um, biscuit and free boots because you should not buy boots on Varus. Like, okay. if you're playing Varus, you just want to buy long swords. You know, yeah. like you might buy a tear, but that's the only thing that's not a sword. Like I know you didn't buy tear here, but you should go tear at some point. Like I like to get dirk and then tear because okay. mana Moon is just a good item on Varus, like second or third item depending on. If you want other items like Edge of Night and stuff, um, but anyways, like you need biscuits. Like this champion, you have to use your spells, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it doesn't make sense to go this because then you have to think about your mana. And if you think about your mana, then you're not really playing the champion, right? Yeah. Like you're playing Varus versus Hui Ash. You should be using Q off cooldown, right? Mm -hmm. Every time it's up, you should be using it. But mm -hmm. you're not able to because you would go oom. Um. Yeah. So makes it sense. doesn't make sense. Like, this makes a lot more sense on like crit AD carries. Like, for example, Jinx, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, for Varus, doesn't make sense. Um, I mean, your on hit setup is good. Like, Resolve is really good. Um, so, like, th this makes sense for sure. Um, I think that you should not ever go Coup de Grado on Varus on hit. You should always either go this one or cut down. Okay. Like the uh, tricky thing about cut down on Varus is that after free damage items, it's very good to start going tank like you did. So cut down might feel like weird, but the thing is like if you're playing, let's say you're playing on hit Varus and enemy has like tanks or bruisers, like let's say it's Lee Sin, he's going to be fairly tanky with health, right? Let's say they have like uh, tank with your top lane whatever, or let's say the sack jungle, even if you are going to go tank at like three, four, five items, right? You're yeah. still squishier than their tanks, right? So cut down is just better, right? Makes sense? Yeah. But if they have like assassins, like they're not really, they're not tanky. They just have like a lot of people killing you, like a cannon top, whatever, squishy jungle. Then it will feel bad to go cut down because they're not tanky. You just go last stand because... You have a lot of, uh, like, close uh, combat fights as Varus, right? When you're on hit. Mm -hmm. So, last stand is just always going to give you better results. Because okay. you're, you're not fighting at full HP when you're on hit Varus. Because, yeah. like, if you're full HP, it means you're hitting tanks. Which means cutdown is better than this. Um, and if you're not against tanks, then you're against, like, assassins. Like this one, Sheiko Yon. You're not going to be full HP hitting Sheiko or Yon. Sheiko's going to jump at you, deal 30 to 40% of your HP with one Q auto, right? Mm -hmm. And then last stand is going to be good. And even for like laning phase, like you're not going to be full HP, right? You're going to all in and there's going to be like both of you half HP and then last stand is going to have value. Because um, on hit, on hit Varus just does not play in a game where this is a good rune. Like you're not Kalista or Draven where you're killing them level one, you know? No. You're playing Varus Morgana versus Lucian Brom. You're not going to kill these guys level 1. So, I am sure if you check if you check your damage numbers of Coop on on-hit Varus, it's going to be like the lowest out of any champion in the game. Okay. Because like on-hit Varus just plays front to back all the time. And he does not really kill people in lane. So, yeah. Not sure why you skill W already when your Rakan hasn't like done anything. You know? Yeah. 
Fair enough. Uh, I think I just wanted to look for a level 1 trade. Yeah, but like he does not have to give you. Like he's gonna yeah. have E back up now, and if you if you click in here, right, and you auto attack mm -hmm. him, if you commit your W, right, 60 mana and long cooldown, he's just gonna auto attack an E, and he's gonna win the trade and click away, and then you're hitting inside of these casters, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So like, what's just mainly important is just making sure that like if they're playing Renata, it's better champ than Rakan unless Rakan all ins, okay? Yeah. Like Renata can bully and stuff, so. Your W is only good for all in, um, but uh, you're not gonna be good for like poking them or something, you mm. know. So like, it's really hard for you to hit them, because Renata should always like cover Varus like she's doing here. You can't find a good angle to auto Varus without just losing trade. Yeah. So if I was you, I would just focus more on hitting the wave, because like already like you could be autoing all the time right now, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you could just be queuing the wave and virus, for example. But the best is just to not use any ability. Because if you the problem with doing queue, right? If you just queue immediately, like let's say you're here now and you queue, then they can play really cocky. Because if you can't double use and you have queued, they're gonna win really hard. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Um But I just don't know why you're playing to auto trade with virus. Because he's just gonna win, no? If he just auto ease you. No, fair enough. Like I would just be hitting minions and then see what happens. And if Rakan hits a W, then yeah, you can W and go in. But you should also not be hugging your Rakan. And that's another problem with when you're standing in this bush, right? Mm -hmm. You're making the correct thing for your support to stand here. But you would want your support to be the one in bush and contesting the bush. You know? And being yeah. in fog. Because that way he can like channel W without being seen, for example, right? Mm -hmm. It's just better. So, by going into the bush here, your pockets of playing should be like these. Like, this is where you're dodging, like inside of this. Because once you start to click on him, you're giving them double E on both of you. Double E on both of you, right? Yep. You should not be clicking on top of your support. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter if... Rakan has Guardian or something. Guardian has a really, really long cooldown, and you don't want to just lose it because you're standing on top of Avaris E or Renata E together. Yeah, okay. It's just a really bad habit to like stand on top of each other like this. It's just like so bad. You're both just getting so like poked for no reason. But yeah, like ideally, like now, you should be like relatively healthy and have potions still. And then this is where you guys can look to punish mistakes, than, yeah. you know? Um, mm -hmm. Of course, it's still their mistakes. If they're good, they don't give you guys, like, a good angle. Varus Renata is a very strong lane. Um, but if they fuck up, this is where you guys would punish, and you can get a really good chunk doing W and Q and auto, 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 E. It's a really good chunk. And then Rakan can always just back off, right? Mm -hmm. But that was just so hard, because if Rakan goes for it, for example... Right? In this case, it's really good because Vars is so far. Right? But Renata should never be here unless Vars can stand here. Right? Yeah. Because normally what should happen is that when this happens, Vars can turn on you. And if Vars turns on you here, with you already being this HP with no potion, then even if you get a good chunk, you're too low afterwards. Right? Yeah. But yeah, this is going to be pretty good as long as you don't run into Vars here. Like, as long as you just take the fight kiting here and just spacing him, then it's good. Now you should just ask yourself, can Ramus come and save this? Otherwise, you should just recall. Because Ramus cannot save this. If Ramus ganks now, you guys are going to get free v freed You know? So, like, yeah. like, now you just have to be smart. Because your lane is not going to get better. You're not going to heal. Like, you don't have a support that's going to heal you. Like, Rakan might hit 1Q and heal you, like, 60-something health. Right? It's irrelevant. So you need to figure out, when is my best recall now? Because you're always going to lose a wave. Yeah. Like, whenever you whenever you choose to base now, you're always going to lose a wave. Yeah, so, so you should just press B now insta. Yeah, like, what I like to think about, right, is, like, how much gold do I have now if I base, right? I'll have 600. So, okay, like, cool. if I take another wave, even if mm -hmm. that stalls my recall, is that going to, like, do something? Because, for example, 600 gold, coal and refillable potion well, is a pretty yeah. good base. You know, mm -hmm. they have a lot of poke in this lane, so you getting coal and refill is really good. Makes the lane a lot easier. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. But then the problem is they are already killing the cannon wave here, so mm-hmm. you're actually going to lose a cannon, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So with this in mind, if you look now after this play here, right now you should want to just kill the wave and then base as fast as possible, right? So like right now you should run under space. Why are you not pulling the wave? You should want them to int. Look around um, this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You need mm-hmm. to use your jungler, right? They should be scared of shit, right? Yeah. So now, if they're good players, right? They, just they should click back now. Off. Yeah. Okay. So, if you do this click and they click back, are you punishing them by clicking back then? No, I'm not. Right? If you drag the wave up and they are running away, then sure, they escape this Ramus gank, but the wave remains the same. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So cool. the situation doesn't change. Ramus is still going to be bot side with the wave still being here. Yeah. Okay. Right? But you're just like letting it crash. Renata kills herself for no reason here because you're not even pulling it. Look, she just like runs it down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right? But her clicks make sense if you were standing here now. Mm-hmm. Because this guy knows we need to get this wave in. Yeah. But if this guy's good, he realizes that you are not even pulling it, so he does not need to do this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because like if Varus decides to like, let's say you start to pull it like right now, if Varus starts to fight you, Ramus is gonna come. Mm-hmm. And of course, Rengar could be here. Obviously, yeah, of course he can. The game is six kills versus zero right now, so I would flip it. You know, yep. the game is going to shit. So, but obviously Rengar can be here. Rengar can basically almost always be here. You gave him a double kill, and he was full clearing down, so he can of course be here. But if that is the case, you should be pinging Ramus away, and you should still pull away, but you should pull it here instead of here. Because if Rengar is here, if that's the argument, you don't want to pull it and stand here, yeah. right? Yeah. You want to ping Ramus away and try to pull it and stand here, so that your wave remains safe, so that you don't have to walk up to the middle. Mm-hmm. Because the thing yeah. is, like, if you're scared of Rengar, if this wave crashes, you will still have the problem of Rengar, since yeah. the next wave will be in middle. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But yeah, this is just strange that you just like let it crash. So like, this guy just runs it down. So, of course, that's good for you, but that's not your skill, you know? Yeah, that's, that's just lucky. Yep. Rengar ulted, right? Uh, yeah, he did. Yes, yes. And you should mm-hmm. just proxy the next wave. Look, their death timers. Renata, up in one second. Uh-huh. Varus up in eight, right? Yep. Look where wave is. Look, Varus okay. spawn. Varus spawn now. Look where wave is. Uh huh. Right? Okay. So, Saya is like the best proxy farmer in the game. Because of feathers. Yep. Right? Feathers, you max the ability, and they are all in a line, right? Your auto attacks are all in a line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, when you take a plate like this, the problem is if you base and he pushes, you lose a wave. But I for Saya, they... this doesn't count, because you proxy mm-hmm. the wave. Okay, but if I now proxy, won't Malzar move? I can't know. Malzar is not Talon with Moby Boots. Oh, okay. Right? Uh-huh. Like, look, look, Malzar. And you're not even like looking at Malzar's resources. But obviously, he could move. But then you should adapt. Right? For example, you have a ward here. You can just go and ward the Tribush, for example. You know? Mm hmm. But obviously, yeah, he can't move. Of course. It's not good for him, though, unless he gets a kill. You should not be hitting like this though. I don't know why the fuck are you pushing? Why are you pushing? Why? I think I want I think I want to do drag. Why do you want to do dragon now and not in 30 seconds? Yeah. Fair enough. Why is dragon good now and bad in 30? No. Like it's such a terrible play to push and go drake now. Let's say you now one shot this and you go dragon. Look where the next yeah, wave is. Wave is fucked, yeah. Right. It was, it was a bit of autopilot. So, I think. so then you go and you hit dragon. Let's say they decide to give it. Then they just push, you lost the wave for no reason. So oh. you gave him this gold that you could have fought him over. Right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. you denied yourself a wave. 
when you can just slow push now and then their correct decision is to not touch the wave at all because if Varus steps up to fucking Q or E the cannon, I am Wing and running at him, right? And my Rakan will fucking kill him with me, right? They can't play yeah. right now. Like, they, they can't do anything. But instead you're just like, slow push into hard push. It's like, it's not like you one-shotted this wave and went Drake instantly, right? You're literally slow pushing, and then all of a sudden you just like smash your keyboard. And then like, now we're like AFK. So now he farms this, and he's like chilling. And now you're like, yeah, let's go dragon. And now you realize next wave is already here. Mm. So now we lost our all-in timer, right? Like here, it's really hard to all-in them here compared to over mm -hmm. here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your Rakan is not in the mindset that I want him to be in at all. He's like completely scared. He should be staying in like the lane bushes, you know, and be like scary. And you should also learn to ping on the creep you want to deny, right? Because if you stand here and Rakan stands here and you're pinging this, it's really obvious what you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. It's really yeah. obvious why you're standing here, if you're pinging yeah. the cannon. But you're both so safe, I don't get it. Like, look at Var's items. Yeah, it's complete shit. Look at him. Yeah. Look at him. This is like one of the big problems with like buying this as an on-hit champ. Because if you're buying this, and let's say you're playing Twitch, it's a massive setback, because Bork is so fucking OP, you know? And it's the same for Varus. Like, this guy has this now, and you have fucking Kraken. Yeah. You are so much stronger than him in a fight. And also just, like, your burst right now is so high. Yeah. You legit one-shot. So, so you're not gonna get, like, a better fight than this. You're not gonna get another fight that the wave is like this, and he doesn't have Bork. Next time you have freeze like this, it's probably gonna have Bork. Yeah. And you're just like handing it to them. It's like so fucking strange. Your Ramus is chilling right now, farming. He doesn't need you to push. He's like completely chilling right now. It's not like, like I, I could get it, you know, if your Ramus is like trolling the game right now, starting to hit the Drake right now, right? I mm -hmm. could get it. You press W here, you Q and you one shot the wave and you go Drake. Sure. But Ramus is like chilling on wolves. Yeah. You can just play 2v2 here. Yeah, I mean, you have nothing to do, so might as well leash this guy. I think you should go and leash him on red buff too, unironically. Uh-huh, okay. Because, like, uh... you're, you're not going to use your push here for anything. Like, let's say you go get mid push here, you're not going to do anything if he's going to farm. Oh. Why am I clicking mid here? And, like, uh, I don't know why you keep doing, yeah. like, recalls like this. It's, like, so useless. Like, turning one sword into one coal field is, like, the most irrelevant thing in the game, right? Like, if you're not gonna go and get mid-push on the next wave that's coming, then mm -hmm. just go gank top lane, then, with Ramus. Just go jungle with him. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. why are you always recalling? Like, the past two minutes, right? You've just mm -hmm. been recalling, right? Here, you're dead. Okay, so now I buy items. I shouldn't want to recall now until I have BF sword, right? Yeah. BF Sword is kind of impactful. You're going Navori, I would assume, right? So you yeah. get BF Sword, pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. But getting Call Field out of a Long Sword is useless. It does nothing for the game, right? So yeah. if you want to recall here for map position, right, to get to mid lane, then fair enough. Sure, maybe you don't want to run all the way in, in the jungle, right? Maybe it's scary. Okay, makes sense. But then now you shouldn't want to recall then, no? Because now you're mid lane, where you want to be. Yeah. So. Now you got mid-push, so now you should go do something. Mm -hmm. So if you can't do something because your jungler wants to farm and your mid is in base, then you just leash him. You leash him this, okay. Now ask yourself, do I want to go next mid-wave? If you don't want to go next mid-wave because you don't think it's safe or whatever, then just go leash him on his camps then and wait for them to push. Mm -hmm. Why are you basing? Like, let's say, for example, right? Let's say they go and they gank sack right now with Malsaha Rengar. Okay, and then you and Rambus are here. Oh, yeah. Can't you guys mm -hmm. come? Yeah, we can. But you are in base for Coalfield. Yeah. You're not going to win games doing this. You're not basing for a power spike. Every time you're basing, you're hurting your team. Right? Yeah. So if mm -hmm. you're basing for something useful, then sure. Makes sense, right? Yeah. But you're not basing for shit right now. You shouldn't want to base until your cull is stacked and you have BF sword. Mm-hmm. I mean, Rengar lost his ult, you guys should fight. Mm -hmm. Good. 
Submit to you. I mean, I think going on him here was good to get him away from Talia. You know? Mm -hmm. But like, he's yeah, really yeah. tanky. Which mm, I think okay. you didn't realize. I think here, if yeah, you turned now back to Renekton, it was really good. Oh, okay. But you also, like, I just think, think the ways you're eing is just bad. Like, if you, for, for example, if you are here, right? And you click upwards, space Renata, and you E, then you can kill him too. Yeah. Because, like, he only didn't die because your E is so bad. Right? Like, if you look at your E, he did, like, no damage, right? Mm hmm. But don't you think if you just R his Q? Yeah, I should have. And then you E, he's just fucked. Yep. See, I'm not really a fan of how you're ulting. Like, you're like, not ready to ult what you need to ult, you know? Mm hmm. Because it was pretty good target selection here to turn on Malzahar. But it seemed like you weren't willing to try to kill him. Like, you should think this is my only time in the game to kill this guy and get his fat shot down. Right? So you uh -huh. should be willing to go for it. Mm -hmm. But instead you're like ulting nothing. Because fights like these, you just have to like send it because you're not going to get another fight like this, you know? Yeah. Not sure how easy it'll be though to fight this Drake. Like, for example, in losing games like this, right? Mm -hmm. There's always bounties on everything. Like, bounties on Baron, bounties on turrets, right? Yeah. So, like, cross-mapping is really good when you're losing. Mm -hmm. So, for example, here, when you base, right? So here, for this Drake, you can base, get BF Sword, and you can go top. Or, you could from base here, right now here, already... You can take over top lane, put your Talia mid lane, and Sack can just be bot. Because Dragon is coming up, so Sack, the guy you don't want resources on, can be bot, right? Yeah. And then you guys can just go top, and when they commit for Drake, you can get the turret. Yeah. That is something you can play for. Because most of the time, in solo queue, people will just overcommit for the Drake. So, if I'm you, that's something I would look to do. Again, I just hate recalling like this. Like, if Dragon is spotting here, I don't want to base. Right? If I'm not contesting it, I want enemy team to take it and us to get something. I mean, if I saw D-Blade and Cole, I can get an uh, worry. by the way. Yes, but that doesn't make Malzahar not four levels above your mid laner. Okay, fair enough. Right? Like, of course you can, but look at Tab. I don't want the game to end here. Like, if I'm playing ADC, right? Mm-hmm. If I'm playing ADC, and if I'm playing anything that buys crit, I think the game is winnable. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. if I'm playing Lethality Virus, and I'm playing this game, I might just think the game is lost, you know? Yeah. Because, like, it's hard to carry. But, you're playing crit, Saya, you can for sure, like, win every game at some point. You know? Like, yeah. you, you just need a good team fight with good feathers, right? Yeah. And it's not a very hard game to play Saya. Like, the only champ that counters you here is Malzar. Mm. You hard counter Rengar, Renekton is NPC champion versus you, right? Mm -hmm. You can yeah. free hit him. Renat has no threat on you. So, like, I don't see why we would want to sell these two items, which are stats, by the way. Like, this, this is good stats. It's not good to sell these two to get an item and then just flip the game. Because these are good stats. This is good amount of lifesteal. And good AD and health, you know? Mm -hmm. So by basing now, selling these two and getting Navori, you are basically making the game won or lost on this Drake. When this Drake actually means nothing for the game. Mm -hmm. Right? If you think about it, they're going to get a second Drake here at 1740. Right? Does not matter. Who cares? What? Right? At 18, at 1810, this will spawn basically. 1810. Oh. They're gonna get soul close to 30 minutes this game. Don't you think you can get a better fight at like 26 minutes or something? Yeah, fair enough. Right, so it's like, I, I wouldn't feel like I need to fight this Drake. Okay. Like your old whole team is bot side, why can't we have vision top side? Mm -hmm. Why can't we try to push mid here? Let's say you're staying on the map, right? Like you base to buy BF sword. Imagine here, you're just mid. 
and you're pushing, right? Your team is with you. Why can't you guys look to kill Mazar here and get 1k gold? Mm. Instead now, you're all just gonna A-Ram and group. And fight them willingly, 5v5. It's like, so weird. Like, sure, your teammates inted, right? They died without you being there. But let's say they wait for you. You're willingly fighting 5v5 the Malsahar team with free items, Malsar. When instead, you could look to catch the Malsar on side lane. The Vision yeah. Rakan is placing on bot side, right? If you're making the call to play top side and give the Drake, then the Vision could be top side, right? Whatever. Yeah. And we could realize Malsahar is alone. Can't we dive him and collect 1000 gold? Mm -hmm. And if we see he isn't alone, right? We see his team is topside, then sure, you don't go for him. Then you can go for Dragon. Right? And then you force Malsar to TP to the Drake. Yeah. But instead, we're just like basing once again. Your team is pressing bot side because you're not thinking about cross mapping. And then it's fucking useless. Right? Now you shouldn't even bother. Your team is dead, so you should just push. Yeah, this is good. This is good that you realized. Here I would check their top camps because their jungler, Rengar, is like the most threat on you right now. And he is 100% on Drake. So when you see Renekton is defending, you should just full clear Rengar's top side. Okay. There's no point to AFK in River. Like, where you're running here now, you could just be checking these camps and then running here. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah fair There's no reason to run here and steal one caster from Sack. Right? And if you're going to go for a turret, you want Sack to base. Because somebody has to defend this now. Yeah. That's like another thing, like, when you're trying to stall a game and win later, even though you want this, you don't want to lose this for this. Mm -hmm. Because it's still important to have these turrets so that you can, like, stall the game, right? If you guys are forced to stand here the whole game, it's hard to, like, contest things. Yeah. Because you have very little ground to walk on. So, if you want to take the top turret, then Sack should just honestly just recall now and go bot lane already. And then you push top and go for the turret. But you're like, you're never calling these things. You're never pinging a single thing in the game. Like the gold that you're getting here, sharing with him, right? Mm -hmm. Why can't you now, right? If he's not going to base, why can't you just run to bot and get gold and XP and then defend mid as well? Imagine, this wave you're going to lose on mid now because you're going to push, and this wave you're going to lose now. If you get both of those, aren't you just going to get the same gold as this turret? Yeah. Right? Look. How much gold did you get there? 225. That's two waves. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. But you're giving them this push and control. So, yeah, I think best play is Sack lets you solo it. and But you have to ping this. Okay. Just ping on my way and say, let me. And ping him to go bot. And if he ignores you, then you go back to defending. Okay. It is not worth for you both to sit and hit the start. That is completely useless. He should just let you get the waves. You get this wave here. Here, you get this wave. And the top turret and the next wave. You're getting so fucking funneled, you know? Yeah. Then you can easily carry this game. And I mean here, like I said before, like you guys should just zone them from the wave. He should not be allowed to cast Qs on this. Another thing is like just because Rakan has ulti up in twenty seconds, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that they know it's up in twenty seconds. People do not track to perfection. So I feel like you really you play in a way where they can't make mistakes. Because you're mm. not challenging them. Like, you have Kraken here. Like, if I was playing, here I auto once for last hit. Makes sense. Mm. Now, on my next last hit, right? I'm going to have Kraken ready. Mm. But you're just, like, pushing and ruining your Kraken procs. And you're just letting them farm. But I would be standing here with Kraken, walking up. My Rakan is standing here. Yeah. What are they going to do? Fight me because Rakan has ult on 10 second cooldown? Right? They're not gonna fight mm -hmm. me. And if they do yeah. fight me, I'm just gonna win anyways, even without Rakan ult. I have fucking Kraken. What are they gonna do? Right? <laughs>